In today's video, I'm talking about Osgood Schlatter's disease, the best exercises and stretches for knee pain. So we're gonna dive into exactly what this diagnosis means and how we can keep you active and pain free. So let's dive into it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica, I'm a therapist teaching you all about injury rehab tips. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Before we dive into the best exercises and management of your symptoms of this condition, it's important to understand why this actually happens. So what is Osgood Schlatter's disease? Osgood Schlatter's disease is often seen in kids between the ages of eight and 15 years old. It's more common in boys, and it's usually with rapid growth spurts, as well as repetitive jumping sports. As a child grows, so do their bones and muscles. So as the kid starts to grow, what happens is as that bone starts to lengthen, the muscles are just having a little bit more difficulty kind of keeping up with the growth of the bone. And so it starts to really pulls on our kneecap known as the patella. And the patella attaches to the tibia via the patellar tendon. It actually attaches directly onto the tibial tubercle. And this is where we develop the Osgood Schlatter's. So there's a big difference between patellar tendonitis and Osgood Schlatter's disease based on the location. So the pain will be specifically on that bony prominence. And what we'll notice is that there might be a thickening around the bone, some swelling or inflammation, and the child will complain of usually a local pain directly on that bump. Whereas the patellar tendonitis will be local on the actual tendon itself. So the symptoms can be really similar in terms of the discomfort with activities and pain in the knee, but it's very specific in terms of the actual location. So really it's that quadricep muscle or rec fem specifically that attached to the patella and it's pulling on our patellar tendon which attaches to that tibial tubercle and that repetitive say if it's jumping sports that's constantly pulling on there and that's creating that Osgood Slatter's disease and it's really important also that we make sure that they're not developing an avulsion fracture at that location because of where the patellar tendon attaches to. For the specific physical examination we have a couple tests in order to specifically test for this. The first one will be pain on palpation in terms of that tibial tubercle right at the front of that tibia and and the second would be if they have pain with resisted extension of the knee. And the third would be what we call the Thomas test. And this is when we're lying down on our back and we have the leg extended off the table. If we cannot get that leg to parallel with the floor, that means that our rectus femoris, that quadricep muscle is tight and it's creating too much tension through there, pulling on the uh, kneecap and this is creating that Osgood Slatter. So this is how we assess for this condition. So do you have Osgood Slatter's disease or does your child have this condition, let me know in the comments below if you're specifically dealing with this. And hopefully this next part really helps you with the progression of this injury. So treating Osgood Schlatter's disease is, unfortunately, I know a lot of people hate to have to slow down with their activity or rest, but really this is the only way to help mitigate and um, reduce the uh, onset of this and for it to get worse and create potentially an avulsion fracture or just continue for much longer than needed. So making sure that you see a therapist so then they can also help you make a modification with your activities is crucial. So really the modifications don't have to be stopping all activities. It can just be reducing certain activities like jumping or running or anything that's really stressing that patellar tendon and also modifying how much activity you're doing through the week. So if there's any exercises that you can do that would be unloading the knees, such as swimming or biking, then this is what we'd want to do to help modify the amount of stress on that patellar tendon. So then that way we can get you fully back to recovery a lot sooner. So stretching is really important for Osgood Schlatter's disease. Yes, I said it. You must stretch for this one. It's crucial in your rehab process. Cue the eye roll. I know how difficult it can be to prioritize your stretching, but if you set an alarm, set your iPhone to a notification once a day or twice a day when you're home, so then you can spend about 10, 15 minutes going through these exercises will be crucial in your rehab process. Focus with these exercises is that we really need to lengthen and stretch the front of the hip and we need to strengthen those pelvic muscles and the glutes and hamstrings in order to strengthen those and take a lot more of the stress off of the front of the thigh. So let's get right into these exercises exercises. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna start with the stretches to begin with. So the first one we wanna do is to target that rec fem. So this quad muscle that I mentioned before, you're going to start with doing a quad stretch. So you're gonna to wanna to hold onto a wall or something that you can just brace onto. You're gonna bring your heel towards your bum. And now what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you tuck your uh, hip underneath, so your tailbone underneath, opening up the front of the hip. 
And then you're gonna try to gently drive the knee down towards the ground. And this is gonna create that lengthening, that stretch right through the front of the thigh. You're gonna hold these stretch for three sets of 30 seconds. And then you're gonna alternate between the right and the left side. The second one is another part of our hip flexors, but it's a little bit higher up. It's also known as our psoas muscle. And this muscle actually attaches right into our lumbar spine. And so what you're gonna do with this one is you're going to go into a split stance. And sometimes you can do this one kneeling as well, but because it's the knee that's affected, this might cause some pain. So we'll do it in the standing position. So your same thing, you can hold onto something if you need to brace a little bit. You're going to have the affected leg back. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna gently just tuck your tailbone underneath and you're going to drive your knee down a little bit towards the floor. That's gonna really help to, uh, to open up the front of the hip and elongate that psoas muscle. Same thing, three sets of 30 seconds, alternate and switch sides. So those are the two stretches that I want you to start with and then we're gonna go right into the strengthening exercises. Okay, now moving on to the strengthening exercise. The first one's gonna be more in that acute initial stage where we uh, don't wanna to put too much stress on doing a repetitive knee extension because that's currently a bit too uh, painful to do. So the first one's going to be in a seated position. You're going to extend the affected leg and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna gently contract the quad and then you're going to lift it up. I want you to hold it for a couple of seconds at the top and then you're gonna slowly bring it back down. And then you can relax for a couple seconds in between, then you would re-engage, contract that quad, then bring the leg back up and hold for a couple of seconds and then come back down. So you wanna start with that one about 10 repetitions and work your way up to two to three sets. Then once that one's starting to feel a bit better, then we can start adding a little bit more of um, knee extension with that one. This one you can use a bolster or a pillow at home. And then what that's gonna look like is just a gentle, see if you can see my feet there, is going to be a gentle extension here. And then slowly back down. So we call this one quad setting. You're gonna contract, hold for a couple seconds, same amount of time for this one. And then when this starts to get a little bit easier, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a band just around both of the ankles. So with the band now, this is where you're gonna hold that unaffected side down and you're going to contract, squeezing the quadricep muscles and then slowly coming back down. So you really wanna feel it right through here and you wanna make sure that it's not painful. If it's painful, then maybe this is a little bit too challenging for you. You can always adjust the resistance of the bands. Um, they usually go yellow, red, green, blue, and then black for strength, but it varies depending on the band and the type of band that you're using. So with this one, you would do three sets of 10 to 15 reps as well. So the next one is glute bridges. We're gonna start with lying on our back, knees bent, and you want your heels as close to your bum as possible, hands down by your sides. You're going to push through the heels of your feet and you're gonna drive your hips all the way up towards the ceiling. You're gonna hold for about five seconds and slowly control it back down. So you really wanna feel that engagement through your glutes as well as your hamstring muscles. You'll also indirectly feel a stretch through the quadricep muscle, which is fantastic because that's what we wanna do. We wanna lengthen the front and then we wanna strengthen the back. So you're gonna start with two sets, build your way up to three sets and do 10 to 15 reps of these ones. Once this starts to get easier, then you wanna do single leg. So you're going to have one leg down, extend the opposite side, squeeze up, and hold for a couple of seconds and then slowly come back down. Then you can alternate, start with maybe eight to 10 reps doing single leg and then build your way up. So this is a squat with resistance band and so it's gonna be placed just above the knees and you're going to be slightly wider than shoulder width apart. You're going to lift up through the inner arch of your foot and you're going to push your knees out and your bum is gonna go back and down keeping the chest nice and upright and then you're gonna squeeze and then come back up. So I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see a little bit more. Lift through the inner arch. You're going to bring your bum back and down, push those knees out towards the side, and then squeeze all the way back up. So for this, you wanna start with two sets probably and build your way up to three sets and start with eight to 10 repetitions. So one of the things that you can also do is that because of the pain that's allocated just at the front here, just onto that bony prominence, if we put a tape or a strap, or use a patellar strap just above that on the patellar tendon, that'll help to alleviate the stress that's on the tibial tubercle. And so it kind of acts like a secondary attachment point, so it's not being tugged on so much. So I highly suggest that you look at getting a strap if you're continuing to participate in activities just to lessen the amount of stress there. Um, you can also use pre-wrap. I love 
using pre-wrap is just quick and easy for those guys um, that have a little bit more hair on their legs. You might want to shave that area and then you can just wrap around the pre-wrap a few times and slowly roll it up and then that way you can create kind of like a modified strap. The other tip that I want to give you guys is that I love cupping and so if you have uh, cups or silicone cups you can use that with a little bit of massage lotion and massage through the front of the quad. That'll help to kind of like separate the layers of the tissue and help to create more circulation in the area. So by doing this, this will help decrease the amount of tension on the quadricep muscle, which will then decrease the pull on the patella as well as the attachment for the patellar tendon. So these are just a few of these stretches and exercises that you can start to implement immediately. They should be pain free. And once you start to feel like they're getting easier after a couple of times doing them, then you can start to build them up. Do these ones daily. In no time you're gonna start moving and feeling better. So I hope these uh, exercises were helpful. And if they were, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for checking out today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already and hit that notification bell to get notified when I post weekly videos. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Okay, let's give this a shot. Let's see how this goes. I'm sweating bullets. And it's so hot. I am sweating. I don't know if I can shoot this. It's, I'm so hot already. It